Hi everyone, I'm Leanne from The One Group and as part of our An Interview With series, I'm joined today by our expert guest, Gary Gumbleton, who is an expert in all things video and content creation. So without further ado, let's get chatting. Hi Gary, how are you? Uh, I'm good, thanks very much, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So this is actually going out live, so if anyone does have any questions, Gary is here live to answer them all for you, so please just pop them in the comments box. So Gary, should we get started? Absolutely, I'm pumped. So the first question is quite an easy one. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about yourself, your professional background and your journey that's led you to where you are today. Okay, gosh. So I, <laughs> uh, I'm like a salesman by trade and a creative by heart, right? So I, I left school at 16, uh, five GCSEs, and I, I did go to college for a couple of years, but I completely failed, right? So I then uh, had a whole bunch of jobs. I was like, a, a, you know, an estate agent, a factory worker, uh, and something else that I can't even remember. A removal man. Oh God, yeah. I had my own removal business as well, GK Services. Anyway, I um, yeah, I, I kind of like kicked the dust around for a couple of years, and I got to like I think it must have been 25, 26, where I had like this. Like epiphany where I was like, okay, cool. No, I'm at the bottom of the ladder now, but I want to be a leader of a creative organization, uh, you know, in 10 years time. And what I did was, you know, at the time when I had this kind of like epiphany uh, and I set this BHAG, a big hairy audacious goal, I was working for like a mobile phone company to sell mobile phones on the shop floor. Uh, so I thought to myself, well, you know, to be a leader in an organization, I needed some international business experience, right? So I decided to go to either Australia, New Zealand, or America, right? Because it had to be English speaking, it had to be the, you know, the easy route to begin with anyway. And uh, Australia is full of Australians. Uh, America's like Fort Knox, right? It's really difficult to get into. So that left New Zealand. Three months later, I moved to New Zealand for 10 years. Yeah. And then what I did is uh, I kind of made the conscious decision. Every role that I went for or, or moved was a conscious decision to get to that big, hairy, audacious goal of being a leader in a creative organization. And like, and people in marketing know that, you, you know, you can't get marketing experience without getting marketing experience. Mm -hmm. And I had zero qualifications, but I was a salesperson, so I, I could blag quite well. Uh, and wing it, and I've been winging it for 20 years. Uh, <laughs> so I moved from like small business to medium business to like large corporate sales, like $10 million contracts, as I went through Vodafone for like six or seven years, all up I was with Vodafone for 12 years. Uh, and then I moved into uh, like a ticketing company, a bit like Ticketmaster, mm -hmm. like Kiwi version, uh, and I was head of sales and marketing at that point. So I managed to add the marketing job title uh, as a bit of a, you know, I took a pay cut because it was more of a sidestep into marketing side because that was always the, the big goal. Uh, then I moved into an agency as a sales director for a creative agency. So I kind of like did it the other way around, right? I went to a sales business to be marketing, I went to a market business to be sales, and then all of a sudden I've got sales and marketing experience. When I moved back to the U, well, I got, I blinked, right? 10 years went by. I don't know why I moved back, because you know, the weather's lovely over there, and there's hard, I hate people, so there, and there's hardly anyone there. But uh, when I got married, I moved back, and I think because New Zealand is like, uh, like a micro economy, right? There's only so many dollars to be spent. All of the agencies were really innovative in terms of content creation. Uh, so they were well ahead of their time in comparison to the UK. So when I was telling people all the stuff that I was doing, they're like, oh my God, that, that seems really, like in the future. So that's when I started uh, Capital Content, uh, which was the agency, and that was uh, lots of ups and downs, which I'm sure we'll cover, but I, I ran the agency for about six and a half to seven years uh, and closed the business about three months ago. So it's gone right from five GCSEs to running and closing an agency. So you came back from New Zealand and set up the agency straight away? Yeah, well I worked for a business for like three months, but I didn't really enjoy it, and I think, you know, what I realised, and it's, it's, it's the same now, is that the, uh, the only way I was really going to enjoy what I did was if I created my own opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, I could go and be a salesperson or a market manager for other people, but at the time, you know, I wanted to create my own opportunity. Uh, or, you know, the only way you're going to guarantee success is if you create a, a market that doesn't exist. So if I was to create a, a market, create my own business, then, I, you know, and it's like I, I was always 
you know, this is like the origin story of any agency owner. I had like a hooky copy of Photoshop when I was younger and I would make people's like posters for, like, for gigs and you know, I would record a bit of audio on a Mac, right? And that was what I did behind the scenes when I was a salesperson. And then what I wanted to do was combine that heart and head kind of stuff, you know? So that's, that's where I am now. So you mentioned BHAG. Yeah. What's that? I know, right? So that is a super corporate Vodafone term. A lot of other people use it, but it's a big, hairy, audacious goal. What it's supposed to be is a goal that you're not actually able to achieve, able to achieve. A bit like a mission statement for a business. It's supposed to be super lofty, super far away, but you constantly strive, constantly push yourself to try and get to that goal. Uh, so mine was to be a leader of a creative organization. And at the time, I was like 22, at scrote at the bottom of the ladder with no experience at all. So in 10 years, my big, hairy, audacious goal was to be uh, to running a creative agency, right? I've never heard that term before. Yeah. Vodafone had this thing like, called the BHAG, and it was a bit like the Grimace. You know the Grimace, the old McDonald's monster? <clears throat> it was like a big red thing. And it was the BHAG, and it was just run around like the, the sales floor in Vodafone. It was super embarrassing, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it didn't help me with my career progression. But uh, honestly, that was one of the big things that really kind of helped me go through. I was living in New Zealand. I was literally 25,000 kilometers away from anybody that I knew. So I needed some sort of focus to make sure that I was focusing my career because I was only ever 100 yards from a dope beach. And it's really difficult to like get distracted over there, you know? So what inspired you to pursue a career in content creation and video? Well. Uh, I think it was mostly around what I'd learn on the fly running the agency in NZ. Because video is, you know, and what I've found is that video helps you explain things, explain complex topics in a simple manner, right? And I, I, I've always felt that I was a storyteller. I was always really anecdotal. And it was really difficult to tell a story nowadays, especially with short attention spans, right, was uh, with written copy or with images. And I felt that video, I could tell a story in three minutes. And what I'd also noticed, I was a bit like Robin Hood, where I felt small businesses were being ripped off. Like they were being charged like 10, 20 grand for a three minute video, where really, you know, uh, you, you can kind of turn that stuff around for a thousand pounds, right? And that, and what I wanted to do, and what I found that my superpower was, I've got two superpowers. One was I can help businesses grow using content. You know, I, you know it was, that was what I loved doing. I felt like I was helping the, you know, the David out of David and Goliath, right, creating video content. But my other superpower was being able to see what isn't there. Not like, you know, I see dead people, but I mean, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm able to, you know, I, if someone says I want to achieve this, I can visualize what needs to be created to achieve that objective and then translate that into video content. So combining those two things, I felt that that, that was what my calling was, you know? So I'd done all the jobs and progressed through my career, but my calling was helping businesses grow by being able to visualize achieving objectives, you know? I want a superpower. I know, right? I wish it was uh, <laughs> more money, you know, being able to conjure more money or turn water into wine, but sadly, it's seen dead people. Can you share some of the key highlights or milestones in your career that you're particularly proud of? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people go, oh, I did this project, or yeah, we did some stuff for charity. I'm gonna go a bit more pragmatic. And I think a highlight was actually when we closed the business and we were talking to other agencies about trying to get a, a job and stuff like that. And again, we'll probably cover this off later. But there were people, uh, when I, met, when I announced that we were closing the business, they were commenting going, oh my God, Capital Content, which is the agency, you were such a pain in our ass because we were losing business to you. And as a business owner, you don't hear that. You don't, you know. So a highlight for me was at the very end, one of the highlights was at the very end where people were saying we were known in the industry. We were winning business of other people. People were talking about us when we weren't in the same room. And really, it was fundamentally just me sitting behind a desk with a shitty laptop and a, and a single camera, which is how I started. We did grow to like six or seven people in a, in a big studio, right? So a highlight was absolutely understanding that I had made a difference. I had made it in the industry. You know? We had done really cool stuff. You know, we did shoot, we did a, like a, a live stream for Major Tim Peake uh, at the Tate Modern. 
So that was quite cool. We did a shoot on the Prince of Wales aircraft carrier. So we've done some really cool stuff. But I think overall it was really, yes, achieving my BHAG, but more going from me, a laptop, trying to avoid watching Netflix, trying to grow a business, to six or seven people you know, running social media accounts for billion dollar companies, creating a thousand videos a year, it, it was the highlight, you know, being actually being able to grow it to that point, right? And I was creating my own opportunity. I, I, I felt that stuff, you know, I wasn't able to, or I didn't want to do it for other people, I did it for myself. You know, and the job market is just super turbulent, right? So if people feel like it's difficult to find a role, then it, there's no better time now than to start your own business, especially with AI, but let's, let's not go into that. No, Beautiful. that's a whole other topic. Yeah. What about any lowlights? Uh, again, loads. And I think, and I'm super transparent, so if anybody wants to come and follow me on LinkedIn, honestly, please do, because I'm really honest. But I think uh, there's the Instagram effect, and I think that Instagram effect also goes over LinkedIn as well. Mm -hmm. And what, you know, people never go on about the stuff that doesn't do very, that doesn't happen in a business or that you struggle with. Because everyone, you, you need to be showing success to be successful. Well, well, that's what people think anyway, right? But yeah, I, we had some low lights. You know, we, originally when we first started the business, we were a video production company exclusively. We only made video. Then COVID hit and we lost all our business because video content, just like we are now, we were in people's offices all the time and all of a sudden we weren't even allowed outside the house, right? So all of our video content stopped, we furloughed, we sat behind a computer, we, we donated kind of like, um, what was it, video CVs and all of that kind of stuff. And we helped people do um, Zoom training and stuff like that. Uh, but what we did is we upskilled ourselves and we turned into social media managers, live streamers, podcasters. And coming out of COVID, we were stronger than we were when, uh, at the beginning of COVID, right? Because we became a full digital agency. And what had happened is we'd gr I'd grown this business uh, to like six or seven people. Uh, and up until the end of last year, I think, I didn't realize, but I was so stressed at managing everything. I was wearing a million hats, right? I was a, a head of sales, head of HR, head of finance, youth pastor, cleaner, right? The whole lot. And I think what I'd actually started to do, what, 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 sorry, what I started out, was as a creative director. And out of the 10 hats that I wore, only one of them was a creative director. And I, I didn't, it's a bit like Balling the Frog. I didn't realize until I had this mental breakdown at the back end of 20, where are we, 23? Back in the 2022, back in the last year. And I got home one day and there was nothing specific that happened that day that pushed me over the edge. But I just got home and I absolutely just broke down. I burst into tears and I couldn't move. Like, and it was such a shock because I'd, not, like I said, nothing had happened that day, but it had been three or four years of boiling the frog, right? And then uh, I just, you know, laid in the bed and I couldn't leave the bed literally for like two days solid. My wife's a nurse, she's super compassionate and empathetic, so she helped me kind of get through those two days. And, and this is kind of the, the, the tough thing for founders of a business, is that you've got to keep going for the sake of the business and for the sake of the people. So I, then at nine o'clock Monday morning, I'm back, you know, putting on the Gary show. And, and it's funny, I always said the Gary Show, jumping around, energetic, you know, and that is fundamentally a front, right? You, people exaggerate the happy feelings to hide what's actually not going very well. And so then over those past five months, from those five months to now, what I'd, I'd lost the love for it, uh, you know, I wasn't enjoying it. I was getting more and more stressed. I was, you know, sales was starting to deplete as well because I was losing the love of running the business. And uh, I was constantly striving for payroll. You know, I was always like, shit, are we going to make payroll for, for next month? Or, you know, where's that next sale coming from? And all of a sudden I wasn't being creative and I was getting distant from my family. And whereas actually you start the business to try and spend more time with the family, which is definitely not the way. You're doing like 80 hours a week no matter what, right? But I, I, yeah, it got to like, when was it? Must have been now three or four months ago where I was like, nah, this is it. You know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill myself, literally, uh, if I don't change my life right now. I'd also been diagnosed with type two diabetes during COVID. Uh, I'd had two kids, so the, the pressure was on me so hard. And then, so I was like, okay, cool. No, nah, I need to, I now need to close the business and go and work for somebody. And not in the sense that I'd given up, but more, I, I needed that 
certainty that I was only ever going to be a creative director. That was going to bring me back into the room kind of thing. So there was that day where I just, you know, pulled everybody in the office. I was like, look, sorry, from today, capital content will cease trading. Mm, no one's got a job. And it was horrible. What I did was actually a few days running up to that, as I'd rung all of the accounts that we were managing uh, and got them to start conversations once I told my staff for them to kind of recruit them. So that everybody was kind of like happy to kind of move on, you know, either have conversations or recruit them as a, as a freelancer or whatnot. So everyone was kind of happy there. Uh, and then it was almost within days, I, I, I was starting to, like the mist was starting to lift, you know? And I, you know, I've been doing a bunch of freelance work over the last couple of months and I've been somehow way more creative without pushing myself too hard. Like I, this superpower that I bang on about had really dulled down and watered down over the past two or three years, but I didn't realize it. Again, you know, like we're born in the frog again. So it got to the, you know, a month in from looking for jobs and stuff, that all of a sudden I was super creative again. I was coming up with all these ideas and I had energy and I'm playing with my kids on the floor and stuff. And you don't, <clears throat> you don't realize that you're like that until you get to that point, until you're not like that anymore, you know? So now I've become super self-aware and I'm a big advocate for mental health, especially men speaking up as well. It's a bit tougher, right? And I'm being really transparent. Like I said, I'm, if people follow on LinkedIn because the, the people miss, well, they don't see the low lights. And you need to see that, right? Because it's a lonely place for founders, you know? Because I can't go home and go, shit, man, I'm not gonna hit payroll to my wife. One, she fundamentally doesn't care because it's not her not getting paid. Yes, she does care because, you know, we're, we're partners, right? But I can't say it to my staff. I've got to keep the, the Gary show in front. So it's a, it's a tough place to be, but you've really got to be self-aware. I, I had to make some big decisions and it got worse for a bit, right? You imagine making six people redundant, you know, a couple of months before winter. It, and the, the other sad thing, the other low light was seeing it all just kind of like fade away. We'll move on to something more positive soon. But the, you know, just, uh, you know, just like the, the email address is closing and the, and the website no longer working and the domain ter returning a 404 error and like the, the Vimeo account of all our examples because we weren't paying it anymore just kind of disappearing. It's like, or, you know, or, and the lease car that I had just, just going and I'm like, everything was just like <clears throat> fading away from me, just kind of like, you know, in a weird dream, I just couldn't grab it kind of thing. Um, but now I'm way better on a much better space. You know, uh, uh, it's not that I quit or gave up. It's just that uh, I've completed act two of my career. I'm now on to act three, you know? Yeah, and I think it's actually really nice that you've opened up because, like you say, mental health, especially for men, is a really hard thing to talk about. Yeah. So it's great that you've opened up. And if anyone does want to chat about, you know, that. Yeah, and they can honestly reach out to me. But I've had so many people slide into my DMs about saying, oh, God, I feel so seen, or it's so nice to see. And none of these people want to be able to express it out loud, which is totally okay. Yeah. You know, uh, if you want to speak to somebody in, you know, in private, absolutely, I'm having a chat. And just explain how I got through it all, you know? And I feel like, you know, it was a low light for you, but actually it was a sidestep into the career that you've always wanted as a creative director. Absolutely, yeah. It's and kind of like shook were, me into yeah. and what you were, not doing what you wanted to do. And what you thought you were doing yeah. to get there yeah. actually wasn't that because you were actually owning a business. Yeah, I was a business, business operator, so, yeah. you know, rather than the creative director that, I, that was in my job title, you know. Mm. So how has your previous experience shaped your approach to your career? I think, you know, I've been very focused on my career right, uh, and like combining all of my experience to get to where I want to be. But I think what, what's helped is that I was in sales and that put me at the forefront of, of the Gary show, right? I was, you know, on the phones all the time, building relationships at CXO level, uh, you know, that helped me ask the right questions in getting the right information out of people to be able to deliver on an objective which is what marketing is all about, but marketing people don't tend to have sales experience, right? From, from a salesperson's perspective, I would say, you know, I would have the conversation and say, right, well, if it's too expensive, why is it too expensive? How can I, is it the product, the service, or the price, right? I would be investigative around how to try and close that sale. And if you bring those skill sets into marketing to say, well, what do you actually want to achieve? Yes, you want a three minute video, but let's take one step back and go, what do you want to achieve? How are we going to do this? What does your audience want? So from a sales perspective, it was about asking questions. And if you ask questions in marketing, you're gonna get much better results. So I think the, the 10 years I did in sales 
combining then the 10 years I did in digital marketing, uh, now being a, a creative director, I, I'm kind of like that, I've got called a unicorn, you know, right, where I can, I can ideate and strategize, but I can also press the buttons and ask the questions, you know. So what advice would you have for anyone out there then that's looking for a career in content creation or video? Uh, don't worry if you haven't got your shit together. It's probably the I, I, I bang on, oh, I was super focused on my career, rah, rah, rah. But it doesn't matter, right? I, I, my regret is I wish, I'd, I, I wish I'd started earlier, but again, don't worry about it. Like, Ricky Gervais wrote The Office at 40, and that was his first thing. Nothing wrong with being 40. No, and so it's like you can actually, you know, I'm 42 now, right? Like, if I wanted to, I could start again. So I, I, don't worry if you haven't got your shit together. N no one does, right? And I think, again, qualifications and education is sometimes, uh, you know, there's too much of an onus on it. I think people are now starting to look, or, you know, look at Stephen Bartlett's pioneering kind of more experience-led recruitment. He doesn't call it experience, he calls it something else. Uh, Personality-led recruitment as well, right? And I think it's more... And like I said earlier, there's, there's definitely more opportunities for people to upskill themselves and develop themselves in their current role. You know? And don't, also, don't worry about leaving a role after three months. I think it's, it's totally okay to job hop until you get the right job. <coughs> Excuse me, because I spend more time with people at work than in my own family. So you've actually really got to enjoy it. You've got to love people at work more than you love your wife, right? So it's, which is it's not easy to do. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, I think... You know, it's such a cliche to say if you, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. But you really have got to enjoy it. You know, and I actually had someone ring me up the other day saying, you know, I'm starting to fall out of love with my job. I've only been there three months. Uh, you know, you, what do you think? There's a couple of red flags, blah blah blah. And I was like, you've got no emotive connection with this business because you've only been there three months. Just quit. Just gap it. Right? There's no point wasting your time because. You know, you're going to be working for 50 years, right? So you just got to do stuff that you actually really want to do. Um, and YouTube, man, you should learn anything. I want this job, right? I want this project. And they said, oh, come in, do a pitch. So I watched a 45 minute video on how to brand a product, mission statement, values, all of that kind of stuff, right? I was like, okay, cool, yeah, I can do this. So I built a presentation and won like this 20 grand job, which is the biggest job we ever won at, at that time. And all I did was watch a 45 minute YouTube video. So um, I think it's a better to, again, another cliche, uh, better to beg for forgiveness than it is for, for, for permission. Mm -hmm. So just go and do it. Just, you know, just try it out. If it don't work, try, try it again, you know? And I think, yeah, I think the key thing for me is if you haven't got your shit together, don't worry about it. You know, so you, you, all of a sudden you go, ah, oh, this is my calling. Because I didn't realize my calling until I was like 25, 30. You know? mm, yeah. I think people do put a lot of pressure on themselves to know what they want to do. Yeah, and they ignore are. those videos, ignore the TikToks that go on about, oh, here's a side hustle with no experience needed to earn 5K a week. They're absolutely bullshitting. They're basically, they're drop shipping, uh, but they're spending maybe 20 grand or a month on Facebook ads. So don't want, like, ignore the hustle culture. Just, if you just, if you look at what your expenses are, add a couple of grand on top, that's all you need. Don't feel that you need to be earning millions a year, you know? So you've talked about some already, but what are the biggest challenges that you faced in your career and how did you overcome them? Uh, oh, this is like a job interview, right? <laughs> so, I mean, the challenges in my career, I think it, the personal challenges was the ambition, right? I, I always pushed myself to grow. And actually, although that is a positive thing, actually that kind of was also a challenge as well because I think in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done. I, I always wanted to get like 50 staff members by the time I was 50. And what I should have done was just to stay at video content creation and a little bit of live streaming and podcasting. Um, so ambition, my personal ambition was always a challenge. And I think, yeah, putting on too many hats, just overall. You know, I, I, what I did is I recruited a salesperson early on where actually I should have recruited a market manager. That, that's the strategy for an agency anyway, so you should be recruiting marketing more so than you should be recruiting sales, at first anyway. Because you need to understand your proposition and your messaging before you go out to market. But I, uh, yeah, that was probably one challenge, is to generate new business. We were too focused on hitting the phones hard and reaching out to people. 1% of the time that worked. What we found, or the way that we overcome it, was that my personal brand 
by the end of it was bringing in like 75% of our incoming leads. So we started to focus on what content created I, what, what content I could create. And then like the, the Gary show was born. And uh, every day for the past three years, I've posted on LinkedIn. And that has generated, like I said, I probably in two years probably generate maybe 300k in revenue, right? But and that's I've never once said, "Hey, buy a product from me," or message someone saying, "Hey, you know, let, let's make your video content." So I think the personal brand uh, definitely helped us overcome the sales and the growth side. But yeah, the ambition personally, I think, was uh, was both a positive and a challenge as well. You know. Mm. So what do you see for the future of content creation then? Good question. So. I hate to say it again, but AI, right? There's a lot of, one that big challenge in the market right now is no business is, there's two, there's no, no business is creating enough content, right? No one's creating enough content. You need to be creating videos daily, you know, five stories at least a day on Insta, you know? three TikToks a day, right? And it's sometimes it's just not commercially viable. It's not sustainable for a business to do that. Also, the business is not, uh, is always talking about themselves. You know, you've got to talk about the audience. If you imagine a date, right? It, you're not going to get laid talking to yourself, talking about yourself, sorry, right? You, you, you need to ask your date questions and get them to talk about themselves. It's just like businesses, they need to stop talking about themselves and get their audience talking or, or create content for their audience. So I think you're going to find the hairdresser on the high street is going to be creating more content than the likes of the BBC. And they're going to be telling stories. They're not going to be talking about hairdressing. What, what should happen is the hairdresser on the high street should be telling stories about their customers and about their staff, about their own mental health or their own stories or whatever, uh, because that raises brand awareness, that tells stories, that gives that emotional connection between the viewer and the business, and at no point has someone said, oh, we do a blow wave for 300 quid or whatever it is. Blow wave. Well, obviously, <laughs> I'm so naive to hair stuff, right? Uh, but uh, I think, yeah, where I see it going is full circle. I think we went from watching Neighbours at three o'clock uh, every day, right? Then we went to uh, binge watching uh, Neighbours in 10 episodes in a row on a Sunday, right? Online. And I think we're going to go back to the, we're going to watch something at 6 p.m. on a Friday online. You know, so there'll be more episodical, programmatic content from entrepreneurs and businesses that we're gonna be having an emotional connection to. One key one, and I hate to keep bringing it up, but Stephen Bartlett's content that he creates, he's creating content about you know, his journey and the stuff that he does, and people are tuning in to like a behind the scenes of a behind the scenes. You know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so I think, yeah, entrepreneurs are the new Hollywood actors, uh, effectively, you know? So that, I think that's kind of where it's going. You know, it, it started ages ago, no one really noticed where, a business has two brands, right? You've got Apple and you've got Steve Jobs, right? They're two brands for the same business. And when it was capital content, there was me and capital content. So it, the more people can look at that and see that actually people buy from people, uh, then pick someone that can run as a personal brand because people effectively bought in with from me, right? Rather than bought in from that little blue square logo that we have. Yeah. So we're coming to the end now. I've just got one more question, but don't forget as well, if you want to ask Gary any questions while we've got him online, please do add them in the comments section. Um, but the last question for me is, how do you define success in your career, career and do you think you've achieved it? Far out. Okay, cool. So it used to be how much money I got paid and what my job title was, was what I saw success as. I wanted to have XYZ manager or director of and getting paid, you know, was it wage and age, right? If you're 28 years old, you get paid 28K a year kind of stuff, right? That's what I deem as success. Now, it's completely different. It's more mental health, work-life balance, commute, being in control of my own responsibility. Also, wage is important because my heating bill's going up. Uh, and the job is important because that's what my mum looks at. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think now it's 
yeah, a share of better mental health, being able to step back and look at myself and be self-aware, uh, having a good work-life balance, you know, understanding that the, the commute, um, you know, oh, I come from that generation where we weren't really allowed to work from home. So I'm totally okay with going to the office. But when you are in your own safe environment and there's no distractions around you, yes, absolutely, you can be way more productive and stuff, you know. So, yeah, I used to see success as how much I was getting paid a year and what my job title was. But now it's definitely that whole um, mental health, you know, being clear in your head, having a good work-life balance. Uh, that's where I see being successful. I can take a pay cut, absolutely, if I can have better mental health. So do we have any breaking news today? Yes, we do. It's very exciting. So obviously, if people have been following, uh, obviously I closed the business. And the job market is super turbulent, right? I've, I've called it other things. <laughs> uh, but this, this is a family show, right? <laughs> so I, yeah, we've been, me and my right-hand man, Chris Mao, who has been creating all of this lovely content for you, uh, he, we have been looking for a job. And I thought it was going to be easy. Because I was like, I am, I am good at what I do. You know, it's a bit egotistical to say that, but I was like, no, I am. You know, I see myself as an industry leader, a thought leader, and you know, we do really good stuff. But I had like over the last three months, I applied for 150 jobs, and only got three interviews, uh, which was, yeah, something was wrong, right? Maybe I was just spelling my email address wrong because I generally thought I w it would be easier. Uh, so we've done a whole bunch of like. Um, uh, freelance work to get through the winter because we didn't want to take the first job that came along. Not that any job came along anyway. But that being said, uh, this week we actually accepted an offer, both me and Chris, as Head of Video Creative Director for a performance agency. So it was super excited because when we first start, when, when I closed the business, me and Chris, which we've been friends for years anyway, we always said that the best case scenario, which would never happen, was to both be recruited by the same organization as a creative director and head of video. It's like, what are, what are the chances, right? And then, uh, yeah, Becky, who I'd been kind of like that founder on the end of the phone kind of relationship with over five or six years uh, over at Reflect Digital, uh, we kind of had a few conversations. And like the, you know, the future of search nowadays is video. You know, people go to, like the Gen Zers are going to TikTok to search before they buy something. And I think combining like the behavioral human research that Reflect can do, and then the expertise around the video content that me and Chris can do, we're gonna absolutely crush it. So I'm pumped. I now get to kick back for the next couple of months, because we start officially in February. Uh, but yeah, man, we're, I, I actually have a job, which is great. That's right? amazing which is a super, Yeah, it's a massive highlight. Right? It's Congrats. Thank you, thank I'm you. so glad that we've ended this on such a high note. And yeah, thank you. So. Thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your story with us and being so candid as well. Cool, man. No, I think more people need to be more candid. You know, I think you need to ignore that Instagram effect and actually be honest because other people are totally in the same boat. Don't feel like you're doing it alone. Don't feel like you need to struggle. You know, it, it, it is difficult to decompress because you've got to find the right people. But LinkedIn has been the most supportive community I've ever been a part of. I can definitely say that Instagram, I've never had someone reach out to me and say, oh God, I, you know, I feel so seen, whatever. LinkedIn, I'm getting 30 a day at the moment, it's nuts. So no, I think more people need to be more candid because it all works out in the end. Thanks so much, Gary. It's been great talking to you today. And don't forget, if you've got any comments for Gary, he's still here live, so please pop it in the comments box and follow him on LinkedIn. Maybe reach out and you'll get some more DMs. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming and uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers.